You are now listening to the Photography Enthusiast Podcast. So welcome to the very first episode of the Photography Enthusiast podcast. My name is Daniel Lee and I have with me John Season. Hey, how you going? Um, <laughs> as many of you probably know him for his YouTube channel and his reviews on mostly Sony gear. Um, so what we'll do is just as a bit of a starting, we'll just talk about each other, sort of get to know, you guys can get to know us, learn a bit about us. So John, um, how long have you been doing photography for? So I've actually been doing photography since I was back in high school. I used to use uh, disposable cameras back then, just using Kodak uh, disposables, just developing them back then, <laughs> just taking snapshots of friends, you know, just capturing those moments. And then it just started to transition from there. So from disposables, I went to put my first digital compact camera, then SLRs, then obviously I used some film cameras as well, and then went into mirrorless cameras. And then that goes to today. So really. Did you study like, photography in high school and use the film cameras like what oh yeah i took the photography uh the subject back then and then we had to use the dark rooms we had that whole um i don't know did you do that as well yeah, yeah. except i like didn't do shit i like pretty much failed, <laughs> failed photography. photography dude that was yeah because <laughs> I hated the teacher, like, and I used to mess around because uh, I'm not even that dark in complexion, but <laughs> in the dark room, I would stand against the curtain in the dark room and people couldn't see me. So they'd like walk up and push, push the curtain and they'd end up pushing me and like freak out. So that's pretty much all I do is just stand around chatting and doing that. Oh, wow. So you're one of those students. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Teachers hated me. <laughs> but you know, when I was always in the dark room, every time I'd smile, my, my teeth were the only things that people could see. And they're like, oh, that's John right there. Because <laughs> you know, it's all dark so and the, then you got that red uh, sort yeah, of glow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Similar treatment then. <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, I completely forgot everything that I, I learned. I mean, I, I came like fourth in photography back then, but I, oh, wow. I forgot like the, the stop bath and ex, you know, the mixing and all the chemicals. Those are the good oh, days yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. If I had to do it again, like you had put it all in front of me, I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely remember what I learned last week, let alone oh, yeah. <laughs> like 15 years ago now, I think it was. Yeah. Don't worry. That's like me, man. <laughs> Uh, Did you um, own a film camera or you just sort of at school? Uh, mainly at school, but my parents had the, it, it was a popular film camera back in the day. It was a Canon AE-1. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I always hear about that. Yeah. yeah it's pretty much highly praised. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I only dabbled in a bit of film just for photography in the subject at school. And then I've been moving from like disposable cameras and then after that, digital, the whole thing. But uh, I do want to get back into film. I always think about it every now and then, but I want to get the the A9, the Minolta A9, not the oh, Sony yeah. A9. <laughs> How was I thinking on that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Completely different camera, but... Uh, you still had the auto focusing on, on that camera. So, I mean, it's, it's a bit more digital, but still film. <laughs> yes. Well, either way it's recorded to film. So even if it does auto focus, it's more of a film camera than there's a digital camera. I'd say. Very true. Very true. <laughs> How about you, mate? For me, I was like, yeah, started in high school doing film, which I didn't really, I don't know. I, I liked it, but I didn't take as much interest as I do in um, digital, like I much prefer digital, just the fact that you can shoot as much as you want and like practice a lot more compared to filming or just burning money each time <laughs> with each roll of film. Very true. Just like with digital so, is, uh, spray and pray, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is like, especially for me, I reckon as a beginner, it's a lot better because you can really practice like without having to worry about wasting your money, you know, it's always paying for the film, paying for it developing. You could sit there taking like, 50 photos of the same thing just to make sure you really know what you're doing and it doesn't really cost you anything besides maybe a tiny bit of electricity to charge that battery back up again. Yeah, which is like only about a few cents maybe <laughs> in the long run. <laughs> but yeah, I always remember yeah, doing that back in high school, just paying for developing and just just waiting for the prints to be printed. Usually makes takes an hour or two for, like back then anyway, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I remember for me, I stopped after high school for, I don't know, five, six years. And it was a point where I had no money at that point. I was between jobs and I was just 
bored, so I was looking at all my point and shoot photos. And you know, Photoscape, the free editing program. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I downloaded that, and I was just editing all these、um, holiday photos from like Bali and that. And I was just found that fun, so I was like, oh, you know, I need to go out and take more photos so I can try editing. And that's how it actually got me back into photography was actually editing.、Mm, okay. So I just wanted to go out, edit, and all that kind of stuff. So you took like a five six year break, and then got back into. Editing and then photography afterward. Yeah, and now pretty much been nonstop for like eight years now. Eight years, oof. Yeah, because <laughs> I was I was using that point and shoot for a while, and I was like kept researching like how I can do this, and I pretty much wanted to be able to control my photos manually, like control the camera manually. So I bought one of those, you know, Nikon Power Shot or whatever they're called. The Cool oh, pics, cool pics! Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So that one was like horrible. It was like <laughs> <laughs> I hated that camera, and then I kept it for a short while and sold it and bought a 550D, and that pretty much, yeah, from there on was just always、uh, DSLR, DSLR, and now mirrorless. Yeah, pure mirrorless, like yourself. <laughs> did you ever own the Sony DS, their DSLRs or whatever they are? Yes, I did actually. That the A350 was my first、uh, Sony DSLR. Well, first DSLR ever actually. But、oh, okay. <laughs> that one, I mean, not many people gave it much thought because you know back then it was either Canon, Nikon, even Pentax was、uh, pretty popular. I remember going to JB Hi-Fi. And just doing my research and trying to find out、uh, which is the good, the best camera to get for it、uh, for a beginner. And then we always like me and my partner back then. We were always searching for one, and then she recommended、uh, taking a look at Sony because she saw an ad on TV about the Sony Sony SLRs. I'm like, okay, I'll take a look at that. And then I, I played around with it, and it was pretty interesting because their their live view implementation compared to the other brands, some of them didn't even have live view, but the Sonys were really fast. And it had a tilting screen, which was a big thing, because no one else had a tilting screen. <laughs> and then, back then, yeah. Back then, yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'll give it a go. And then I ended up loving it because they had the stabilization built into the body. They had Zeiss lenses, although they were two, three thousand dollars, and that was a lot of money to me. Like ten years ago, <laughs> so I just found <laughs> to me it is a lot now. Oh, it? oh yeah, for me too. <laughs> it's not small change still. <laughs> But the fact that you could use、uh, Minolta lenses was a big draw card for me because Minolta was getting out of the the camera game back then, and then Sony bought the camera department、uh, from Minolta, and then I can still use you know these secondhand lenses from that were being used by a different brand, which was a big draw card to me. So that was a good thing to go with. The Minolta 50 mil 1.7, one of my best lenses I ever purchased secondhand. It was just it was so cheap. It was like seventy dollars with autofocus as well. Oh wow,、yeah. very cheap then. It's like nothing comparable in this day. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Now prices have inflated so much. Yeah, but that that was A mount. So, so. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. Everyone keeps saying A mount will die, but it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere just yet. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, you can still get some decent A mount. Glass cameras as well, but yeah, I mean, they, in Australia, it's it's getting a bit more difficult to actually find some A mount stuff unless it's just secondhand, or if there's a store trying to get rid of their A mount lenses. It is hard though. Yeah, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> <laughs> Pricing, availability, and everything. That's right, man. That's right. Like for example, the recently announced everyone would know Sony 35 millimeter f 1.8, the full frame lens, not the APS-C one. Um, there's still not even pricing available. Like I'm checking every few hours. Every <laughs> few hours. I'm like that desperate. <laughs> <laughs> like just in case the pre-orders have become available. But when I inquired with one store, they're saying they're still waiting for Sony Australia to release the pricing before they can set theirs. Oh, so you actually asked the camera store already? Yeah, I asked Camera Pro, and I've yeah, pretty much just because I'm that desperate to know what the pricing <laughs> will be. Well, as considering.、Um, uh, What's it called? I think it was B and H. They have it for seven forty eight, seven forty nine, something like that. Yeah. Inflation with、uh, Australia, <laughs> GST, and then import tax and everything. But all the good stuff. It'll be, it'll be interesting how that、uh, um does affect the price because pricing here isn't that sort of straightforward a lot of the time. Yeah, and I would assume they'd want to price it obviously higher than the the Zeiss thirty five mil two point eight. So yeah, and that's roughly about eight hundred, I think, or. Is it around that price? Somewhere around there, I think. Yeah. Because、yeah. even I remember back in the day. Do you remember the Sigma EX lenses? 
Oh, yeah, I remember those old school ones. Yeah, I wanted to get the um, 50 millimeter EX. I remember going into camera house back in Perth and asking, like, wanting to buy that. And the guy kept trying to sell me the Canon 50 millimeter F14. And I was like shocked because everywhere was selling the Sigma lens for more than the Canon. So I'm like, why is this guy trying to like downsell me? Usually they want to upsell you. And then later on, I realized that he, the Canon lens was actually more expensive than the Sigma. They were selling it for a higher price. And that's why he was trying to bump me up to that, even though, you know, with the AF issues that lens had is like a kind of inferior lens. Yeah. The 50mm 1.4 in the Canon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's got an old, very old AF motor in it, which is known to fail quite a bit. Yeah. And compared to the um, wide open performance as well, supposedly isn't as good as this, that Sigma EX version. Yeah. So the Sigma was the better option, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which they actually charged less, surprisingly. It was only like 200, but the guy figured he could make an extra 200 out of me, which didn't work. Wow. <laughs> Whatever they can do to get the sale, man. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Make more money. Um, so I <laughs> think we'll probably now get into today's topic, which is our very first one, which I would call the big bad B word. So for those wondering what the big bad B word is, I would say is brand. Oh, so okay. as, yeah, <laughs> as you know, in photography, brand is like, it's become pretty much like your identity, like you know, like a religion or a politics that you just have to align with. You know, you're Sony, you have to preach Sony <laughs> online as much as you can. Well, Do you find the same thing? Well, to be honest, like, I mean, I, I try not to, you know, say bad things about other brands. I mean, I do love Sony. I did start with Sony and I do love what they're doing. I, I know I have fans that just, you know, there was this one time when I updated my banner on my Facebook page, my, uh, my, I think it was called, yeah, it's pages, my John Sisson photography page. I changed the banner because this is what my, uh, my manager on YouTube told me to do. She she made a whole banner and it had a Canon shaped camera there and I updated my banner and then I had so many people commenting like saying this this post makes me sad why are you doing this I thought you were Sony it did the camera didn't say Canon Sony or Nikon it was just a blank camera and then I, I copped so much from that I'm like okay sorry guys this is <laughs> I don't know what to say it's just a banner with a camera on it that's all <laughs> that's an excellent example of how people get so like touchy about it, it it's really interesting like you know, uh, you know, when you, when you buy a camera, like say Sony, for example, you're, you're like in this Sony family. I mean, it's great to have that camaraderie, but sometimes it gets to a point where it's just like, if you have a different brand, you're like shunned upon, like, you know, not many people will find your photography great because you're not using their preferred choice of brand, but that's just how it is yeah. these days, unfortunately. And so you shoot exclusively Sony, correct? Yeah. Just Sony at the moment. I do like what Fuji is doing. I do like some of their glass that they have available. Uh, I have played around with, you know, the other brands like Panasonic's full frames, Canon, Nikon. They're all great, but for what I prefer, I do like the Sony ones better, to be honest. Better value yeah. as well for me. Yeah. Uh, one interesting thing in regards to that as well, because you do YouTube, do you think you can ever see yourself doing multi-brands? Because I know Manny Ortiz, one of the popular Sony YouTubers who was even in the what, Sony Alpha Collective, he switched and ended up doing all brands just because he felt like it limited himself by um, only shooting Sony in that sort of online space. Yeah, I always thought about doing that, to be honest, like moving, like trying out different brands. Uh, that was actually three or four years ago. I was thinking of doing one with the Canon the M6, like doing a comparison. Oh yeah. I never ended up doing it, but everyone knows me as a Sony guy, <laughs> mainly yeah. because I've been doing it for so long. But like from what a few of my other friends or my old older subscribers said, like I was just one of the first ones to do the Sony camera lens re reviews tutorials, which was like nearly eight, nine years ago, I think when I first started. But it's been on and off since then, but I wouldn't mind doing other brands. Like I'm open to it. Fuji is probably my number one brand that I would pick, but we'll just see how we go from there. Really. I'm just doing like a catch up with all the lenses and cameras. Cause I, I took like a few months breaks back here uh, last year. I mean, yeah, still making up time. <laughs> oh yeah. There's too many, you know, the amount of lenses and cameras that are getting released. It's very difficult to keep up these days, especially with third party brands. So you've got like Tamron oh, yeah, yeah. Sigma just released, like announced three different lenses. I'm like, Oh man. 
There's so many things yeah. now. <laughs> They're 32, 1, 2, the 14, the 24, and the 45, F2.8. Those, if I remember correctly. yeah, that's right. Those lenses look amazing. The 35, 1.2, though, that's, it's that's huge. huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's over one kilo, man. That's crazy. Is it over one kilo? Yes, yeah, just over one wow. kilo for a 35 <laughs> as well. Like my 35 art, which is 600 grams, already feels like quite heavy. So imagine a one kilo. <laughs> Well, I guess it is the first of a, uh, what do you call it? An F1.2 aperture with autofocus. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, I don't I'm pretty sure it's the first. I know there's lots without autofocus. Yeah. First full frame one as well. Cause it, do Fuji have a 35 one too? I know they got the one four. Uh, I, they have quite a few one, two lenses. I think they had a 56 1.2. I okay. think I'm not too sure on that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they uh, share your interest in Fuji as well. They seem quite interesting what they have. Like one stage I was thinking of getting a Fuji body for APS-C, but then purely just because the cost of switching over from Canon, the mirrorless ones as well, it just didn't seem worth it. Yeah. And I do think their uh, their medium format range is pretty interesting as well. I mean, oh, yeah. granted it doesn't have all the the bells and whistles of like the Sony, especially when it comes to video from what I've seen so far, but for stills, it looks like a good camera, especially the X 100 F that one looks good too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a very good value for what it can do. Yeah. Quality but wise. I think that one that uses the standard, um, what is it? Bayons? Is it called Bayon sensor? Bayons. Oh, oh you know, yeah. Yeah. It, I think it does. Yeah. That uses a standard color system, not the Fuji X trans sensor. Yeah. Oh, does so it? The, the, the medium format one you're talking about? Oh, oh medium X100. Sorry, I'm thinking of... They do, is it XT100? I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the wrong ones. But oh yeah, the medium format ones definitely would... I think they use Sony sensors actually in the medium format. I wouldn't be surprised because they're just giving out medium format sensors to everyone these days. <laughs> and they're making a lot of money. I know there's been a lot of discussion in that in regards to... Um, some people say they should split their sense of business and sort of act independently because of the fact that they reserve their best and newest senses only for Sony bodies. Oh uh, yeah. I did read, read them on that. I think they want to spin off the, the sense of business. I think the entertainment business and maybe some other business, I think, but yeah, I did remember reading yeah. that. Interesting. Cause they're gaming, gaming and photography. I think are their two highest profit areas at the moment. Oh, and photography. Yeah. The camera, because they're sensors technically. I don't know how much, because, you know, most of the time you sell body, kind of like they're similar in that sense, because with gaming, you sell the consoles for a loss, whereas the first party titles, like exclusive games is where you'd sort of make that money back. Mm. I know the, the same with cameras. Yeah. I, rem I know the, like, for example, the PlayStation, uh, the, the PlayStation network is what's making a lot of the, the revenue back for Sony. Because, you know, people yeah. paying a, a subscription like every year for it and then you get all these benefits. It's pretty cool that, that what they're doing with that. Yeah, I do the same. It's, you can actually come, uh, we'll do it in a later episode, you can compare the gaming industry a lot to um, the camera industry because you got Sony and Canon who both sort of diversify their business. They have money in other areas as well. Like Canon has its office stuff and all that mm. um, as well as its cameras. Same with Sony. They got the electronics as well as the cameras, whereas Nikon's just pure photography. And in the gaming industry, you got Nintendo, which is just pure gaming. They don't have any other side businesses. So it's actually very comparable. Very true. <laughs> in that sense. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's why when people keep saying Nikon are going to disappear, you know, they're in trouble. Like people say the same about Nintendo that, you know, they're, so many times they're going to disappear. Then you look at, they came out with that one product, the switch, and now they're absolutely killing it again. So that's why I'd never sort of count out Nikon, no matter how bad it looks. Yeah, very true. I do hope, um, cause I, when I used to work at a, the camera stores, uh, a few months ago, Nikon was the one that wasn't selling a lot, unfortunately. I mean, they, they made great cameras. They still do. Uh, there, there's just a few things that I think, they copped more than they should. Like for example, the, uh, I think it was on the Z6 and the Z7 or Z7. Uh, the, <laughs> I don't know how people pronounce Z or Z or whatever. <laughs> I think it's Z. I think they prefer Z. They prefer Z. The Z. Z. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, oh, what do they call it? The single card slots. 
They cop oh, so yeah, much from yeah. that. <laughs> oh, like the, the autofocusing seems pretty well done, to be honest, especially with the new firmware update. There was just a video a day ago by DP Review about um, how it still catches eyelashes a bit more compared to oh, really? other ones. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't checked that, it's worth watching about that. I know when Jared Pullen did his review, there were, <laughs> was a bit of jokes about tree AF because one of the Nikons just kept picking up the tree. <laughs> But, tree AF. Um, tree AF, yeah, it's the newest <laughs> technology. Forget IAF, forget animal AF, it's tree AF. Oh, that's a new thing, man. Sony's better what? jump on that, man. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I always see is, um, especially with Nikon, them and Canon do it to the extreme. So Canons tend to really limit the features based on the pricing. Like they really design the camera to that price point. Whereas Nikon, they tend to do the opposite. They just throw everything into everybody, which it's good for the consumer, but at their sales, it's like it damages their sales because why go for the top end body like a D6 when you can get everything you want in the D750 or if you get one yeah. in the D850? Yeah. It's good for the consumer, but bad for their business. And that's sort of what's hurting them, in my opinion. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, when you're comparing it to like the A7 III, which has been a hot seller for so long, even when it came out, you know, it was really difficult to get for the first two, three months, actually maybe even four months, to be honest. But the yeah. feature set on that camera, plus the quality, and you got the focusing, which is a big deal to a lot of people, uh, they just killed it. And they, I remember them labeling it as the basic model. Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people were hoping for Canon and Nikon to really you know, jump out of the gates and just go guns blazing, deliver like an amazing camera. But a lot of people were disappointed. And then you, you have, you know, people that would always be supporting Canon and Nikon. But yeah, Sony, I, I got to say, Sony really killed it with the a7 III. That's pretty much what made me switch over because I, I wouldn't say that it was greatly better than what is technically specs wise. If you want to look at it, it's a much better camera. But for me, I just got impatient. I really wanted a full frame mirrorless and that came out and it's just one of those bodies that just has everything and it's too good to sort of <laughs> resist. Yeah, yeah. You can't pass it up, that's for sure. Especially, yeah, especially when you're comparing it to the other camera bodies or what was available at that time. That was... That was a good camera to go with. <laughs> I remember a lot of people speculated that's why they released it when they did and at that price point, because it was so good that it would make people switch over before Canon and Nikon could release their yeah. offerings. And then pretty much once you, you know, switch majority of people, once they switch, they're not going to switch back yeah. at least for quite some time. So if that was a strategy, it worked well, because I am an example of that, that how well it worked. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you start seeing all these articles and all these videos online saying, oh, why I switched to Sony, I'm leaving Canon and Nikon, blah, blah. And then it just created that momentum of, you know, amount of people switching from, say, Canon and then going all the way to Sony. And then everyone's just sharing their stories in that regard. Yeah. What I will say quickly in regards to that, I find everyone goes, oh, this many people from Canon are switching to Sony because Sony's, you know, Canon's useless, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but when you look at it, so say you have a restaurant and there's two choices. You can get the steak or you can get the ribs. Oh. And then everyone, like say more than half the people prefer the steak, like majority like the steak, which is Canon because they have the largest market share. Talking about food. And then the rest, <laughs> an icon. Then you have, you have the third one. A third choice comes in, the fish or something, which is Sony, even though I don't like fish. but <laughs> um, So that new option comes. So of course the more people like people are going to switch and try that new option. And being that Canon had the largest sort of footing, largest market share, largest amount of users, of course, you're going to see more people switch from that larger amount to the small, to a new option. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's not so much <laughs> a case that like, or Canon people like hate Canon, that kind of stuff. It's more just, they had the largest offering and stuff. Now people are switching to a, some, try something different. And of course it's natural with anything is going to happen. If it was the vice versa, Sony and, Nikon and then Canon came out, you know, people would want to try that new thing. Very true. Man, I, I, yeah. I somewhat wish you didn't mention food because I'm getting so hungry right now. <laughs> go for a steak. Can't blame you. <laughs> uh, yeah, my local butcher shut down, so I've got to walk a bit further when I'm going to go buy my steak to cook now, sadly. Oh, man. At least you've got restaurants and cafes like downstairs to you. I have to drive up to. Actually, no, I can walk to my cafe, but still, <laughs> I want some steak now, man. <laughs> go Sabah and see the people <laughs> in Sydney would. 
know what we're talking about, but everyone else will be like, what's that? Oh, I haven't had Subway in a <laughs> long time, cool. man. Oh, it's really good. I recommend, uh, you know, just for somewhere <laughs> cheap to go. Yeah, for all the foodies, uh, yeah, Subway, definitely check that place out. Good quality stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever visit, like those in the United States would know BLT Steak. They have them in like Hawaii and that. Uh, I don't know where the other locations are, but BLT have the most amazing steak. Yeah. So back to that. So as I mentioned, like brand is like politics and religion. You'll find people, you know, really identify with it, really defend it like wildly. You know, like if someone talks badly about your political group or your religion, people are like, no, this, this is what you have to do. you got your Jehovah's Witness come to your door. This is what you should think. Can you imagine someone coming to your door, like knocking on the door? Hey, I just want to have a discussion with you about Canon, why you should join Canon, why you should buy <laughs> Canon. Like <laughs> we started Canon this many years ago. You should really see how beneficial it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, when it comes down to cameras and photography, I mean, it really comes down to how you're, how you take the photos really. And then what you can do with them. Like I know a lot of people get into editing these days, applying filters and it, all that stuff. But you know, after people see the, the photo, it shouldn't really matter what camera you use to be honest. I mean, every yeah. lens has a different ability, but some, sometimes people just get caught up way, way too much in the gear. Oh, definitely too much. Like you see a lot of people, they'll try do challenges where they try different camera system. The main issue you see them having is just button placement. You know, you get so used to where everything you have set up, especially on Sony cameras with the customization you get used to, you know, custom two is this, custom one is that. That's the main issue you see them having, but results, they always get the same results. Yeah, very true. I mean, I, I will say, you know, it depends, uh, with, with Sony's cameras, the only thing that gets me uh i'm somewhat frustrated sometimes is uh the the actual ergonomics of it and not having the flip screen sometimes because i do a lot of video so i i do prefer having flip screens instead of using a monitor or my phone to actually frame myself in getting the shot i i do love how the canons and the nikons feel compared to the sony though like just the grip of it is just easier to hold and much more comfortable although the button placements on the sony i, I do prefer on the a7 III now well i'd say sony's come a long way like to be honest, like when I was using Canon, the first generation and second generation bodies, I still wouldn't switch for. I wouldn't want to purchase. Whereas the third generation, they sort of in a league of their own now. They really step forward with grip size, ergonomics, everything, yeah. the performance. The, uh, the, the first A7 was, I mean, I know what they're trying to go for, like the smallest full frame. And I think in some ways they went too small and they sacrificed ergonomics yeah. for that compact yeah. size. I think that's how they... That's a philosophy when it comes to making a few cameras like the RX 100s and the like the HX 99, very small, compact, but somewhat uncomfortable to hold for long periods of time. Or you'll probably need to get more accessories just to make that shooting experience more easier. Like with the RX 100s, you have that grip that you can purchase separately yeah. <laughs> and then with your a7 III, a7 r3 you've got the that short extension grip that you would attach to the bottom of the camera just to make it a bit more easier and comfortable to hold yeah you can get l brackets as well which is something i've got into more recently do you use an l bracket more often or? yeah yeah i don't really carry it on the camera when i'm not using a tripod but i pretty much stupidly only learned of them like last year and since finding out about them i love like the l bracket especially as someone who does a lot of product photography on the tripod mm. having that vertical um option makes it much much more stable oh for sure man for sure i actually use uh i i don't use l brackets on my a7 III. i actually used it on my a7 r2 but because I'm always filming, uh, especially on the go, the a7 III always usually has my gorilla pod attached to it. So it's just, yeah, that's my extra grip, really. <laughs> Speaking of like things you don't like about Sony, I'd say the paint on them does come off a bit easier compared to other brands, which I've seen as a common complaint. Yeah, that and the uh, the LCD screen. Have you seen it on online? Like it's the coating of it. It seems to wear out. And then uh, it, you okay. get all these little oh. blotches <laughs> every now and then. That's why I, I yeah. usually recommend people getting a screen protector just to avoid that. Because I've, I've seen, if you look it up, like you'll see some people getting these blotches of the 
the coating coming off and then it doesn't look good and then it makes it difficult to see especially with the cameras that have touch screens it just it looks terrible to be honest yeah that's one thing i miss especially about canon is the screens as well because with the 60 mark ii that one was fully articulating oh which yeah some, yeah it was so good i remember when i shot a wedding with that i um was holding it up like straight in the air and had the screen and the other guy i was shooting with had like a 1dx2 and he was like oh my god i want that screen <laughs> I, w- I would love that. There's a lot of speculation that um, Canon actually have some patent for that scr- like type of screen. And that's why no one else ever includes includes it on their cameras, which is quite interesting because, you know, so many generations of Nikon, Sony bodies, we never see fully articulating screens. Oh, really? They have a patent on that? Yeah. Could be possibly. Yeah. Okay. It makes, would make sense in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really would love that on the Sonys, to be honest. It's just so, you know, when you're not using and you're just traveling around, you can just flip that screen oh, yeah. in and then you don't have to worry too much about it getting scratched against whatever really for people who like for myself i prefer the evf over the rear screen so i could just leave it flipped the whole time and that makes it even more safer in that sense oh very true but the the yeah. screen i really like uh that no one else is doing but is only i think only available on one camera is on the fuji the xt 100 so you've got the tilting ability with the sony's like what the sony's have yeah and then you can flip it in on itself on the side or just flip it in so the screen's not exposed like on the Canon. So they've got a mixture of both. And I love how they've done that on the X-T100s. Yeah, to look into that camera a lot more. Yeah, it's really the the best of both worlds when it comes down to flip articulating screens. Yeah. One other thing I was going to say is when it comes to benefits to brand loyalty, there's no actual real benefit in a sense. Because can you imagine if it was like, you buy two generations of bodies and you get the third free or third half <laughs> price or something, then that would like make sense. Yeah, hell yeah, be like brand loyal as you can. But what you don't actually really get anything from brand loyalty. No, not not a whole lot. Not unless you have, I'd say maybe thousands of followers. Maybe you'll get some freebies yeah. from, <laughs> from the actual brands themselves. It, it can happen once in a while. Uh, maybe we'll yeah. save that for another topic in another day. But <laughs> I think... But pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. I mean... You'll, you'll continue investing in the actual brand, but you won't get much in return. But really, it's all about taking photos, to be honest, and just enjoying photography. Yeah. Like each system has um, its benefit of lens, ben- like lenses that no other system has, like, you know, Canon with the 85 twos. Sony, like I'd say they're starting to get some really great quality lenses, like the 85 eight is the Sony version is pretty much for the value and for the price. It is like the best, probably 85 millimeter on most systems and Tamron, on what they're doing with Sony, like they're 28 to 75 and now the seven, 17 to 28. Those two are like really amazing lenses that you can't get on other systems. Yeah, that's very true. So I always see the lenses being the most important. Like people argue about body dynamic range or that kind of stuff. But to me, it's about the lenses. Like whenever a friend asks me like, which camera should I buy? I always tell them, look at the lenses, whichever lenses you like, the most buy that system. Mm. That, that definitely is a, a plus for the Sony's because all, a lot of the third party manufacturers are getting into the E-mount. So you've, you've got the Sigma, Zeiss, yeah. with the Batis and the Loxia line and the Tuit line as well. Uh, yeah. Tamron. If, yeah. if I remember correctly, apparently Sony shared their AF algorithm with third parties. Correct. Yes. Whereas Canon, Canon and Nikon, they're not, especially for their Z mount and their RF mount, they're not actually sharing that once again. So even if you do get third party lenses for, um, what's it called? Canon, then they probably won't work on Nikon. They won't work as well as what third party lenses work on Sony. Yeah, that's true. I, I read about that. I rem- I don't know where, I, I think it was on Petapixel or something, but yeah, that was an interesting thing that they decided not to do and share their, their algorithms on the, the actual mounts. But Whereas Sony, they yeah. shared it to everyone. That's why you have all these adapters uh, coming out as well as obviously the lenses making it easier for it to autofocus and use the Sony's IAF and all that, all their technologies. Very interesting that they did that. I don't yeah. know why Canon Nikon would keep it to themselves. Though. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, supposedly in, I don't know, I might be getting this wrong, so I apologize to anyone from Japan, but <laughs> they're more of like a socialist country. So they believe in every like all Japan prospering, not just like one business. You know, like here they wouldn't sort of help each other, whereas supposedly in Japan um, they'd sort of more want to help each other. Like when Nikon a few years was in trouble, the Japanese government was asking Fuji to help them to possibly because they didn't want a foreign company buying Nikon. Really? Okay. Yeah, it was in the news a few years ago. If you look it up, so that's why um, you know people. Some people speculated 
Sony could buy Nikon, mainly because Nikon sort of rely on Sony sensors. So it's sort of a move that would make sense. And several years ago as well, Canon tried to buy Sigma, made offers, it got um, found out that, yeah, Canon were trying to buy Sigma, but Sigma rejected their sort of any attempts to buy them. Oh, okay. That's pretty interesting. I never knew about that. <laughs> yeah, because if they had bought Sigma, that would sort of be good and bad. The AF on their lenses may have become more reliable, but at the same time, <laughs> the prices probably would have gone yeah, up. Yeah, very true. And plus, if Canon bought Sigma, you wouldn't have what you call um, the L Mount Alliance. Do you know about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, With yeah. Sigma, Panasonic, and Leica. Yeah. That'll be interesting. That's another thing people have to start watching out for, like how they're going to come into play because everything I've seen to hear so far that they're um, quite good cameras. And like you mentioned, you don't like the grip size on Sony. Those uh, like the Leica, or oh, is it Panasonic S1? Yeah. And S1, those are meant to have a lot larger grip and more sort of um and user friendly when it comes to holding yeah them. and the, it's just it feels a lot more solid to be honest and durable compared to the sony's uh one thing also yeah. that i prefer sony to improve on is their touch screens they are terrible for me oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's why a lot of people laugh because they they make mobiles but then their touch screens are sort of quite bad I don't know, what's going on there man it's weird <laughs> like i noticed on my canon like my m5 the small aps-c mirrorless mm. like you don't even really need dials because you can actually change settings so quickly with the touch screen yeah you can just say if your people know that canon screen which um has all the you can adjust everything from there you just literally tap on um say shutter speed and then you scroll the wheel it'll change it then tap on aperture change it like it's actually really quick when you can uh, use your touch yeah. screen that's that's a very true. Like I, I played around with, to be honest, every other manufacturer's touchscreen is miles better than uh, the Sony ones. Like with the Sony, there is a bit of a delay at the same time. And it just, it doesn't feel yeah. too sensitive when I, I touch it, the LCD screen. That's why I never rely on it. I just use the, the buttons or the joystick on the, the A7 III. Now, speaking of touchscreens, and have you heard of Canon Toki? Canon what? <laughs> Can, Canon Toki. It's like T-O-K-I, I think it is. I hadn't heard of them either until recently it turns out canon actually have a huge stake in the i think it's amoled screens like you know that use on phones and every cameras and everything. oh okay so they have a huge business they bought this business i think 10 years ago and they actually sell the machines people can use to make them make these screens so that's why i'm guessing possibly that canon have such great screens is because they have that stake in the touchscreen business okay all right that's news to me <laughs> yeah yeah something to look into like it was quite surprising when i read that because you know people say oh this company does this but with canon they have a lot of interesting sort of side businesses like that amoled screen with mobiles being such a big thing you can see why they would make money yeah from that. that makes much more sense yeah as well as they focus on a lot of interesting stuff like you know they have their rescue drones that are meant to be able to that's why those really low megapixel sensors but they can see pretty much in pure darkness yeah like, 2 million IS or whatever. Yeah. There's a, for their like rescue drones that can be used. So even if like say Nikon sell a million of their camera, if soon like Canon use these products and they get bought by a government, those government contracts would make them like 10 times that. You yeah. know what I mean? So <laughs> on paper, it may look like, oh, Canon selling less cameras, but then they probably still make a larger profit due to those other areas. Yeah, so it's good that they're diversifying instead of just not just focusing on cameras. But Canon have always been somewhat spread out in terms of their business model from what I've seen. But the rescue drones, yeah. I don't know about those ones, actually. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like we've been saying, you know, there's benefits and negatives to every brand and should never really be. I like being a multi-brand shooter. Like I have my Canon mirrorless system, the M series, plus I have my Sony system. I pretty much always want to be a multi-brand shooter. I don't want to limit myself to one brand. Mm. Sort of like video games. Like I love comparing it to video games, but people argue over like PlayStation versus Xbox <laughs> versus PC. You know, like I own everything because if that exclusive game comes out on PS4, yeah. if you own PC or Switch, you're not going to be playing it. Whereas if you own all of them, you can play every exclusive you want. You know, Very, very true. Never miss out. Although you do save money same. if you don't have to uh, get into a different system at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, that initial, it's always about the initial cost. Like even with cameras, if you always willing to sell your old body, you only have to really 
really make that initial investment. Like I got my 60, original 60. I actually won a competition, which um, the prize money was like 1500. Then the camera was on sale for 1400 at that time. So I managed to buy that. So yeah, I sold that 60, which funded my 60 Mark II. Then I sold that, which funded my A7 Mark III. And like, I never pay full price now. Like I only pay like 500 or so. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a, that's a good hustle, man, that you got right there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much you just make that one initial investment. And from there, you just sell that body and then keep upgrading. And that way you never have to really spend full price for a camera again. Yeah. If anything, when it comes to cameras and lenses, it's always best to just, you know, wait for a sale or just do those trade-ins or just sell gear that you don't use because and lenses these days are so expensive. I mean, you've got your budget ones, but if you, sometimes usually if you want the best ones, you got to spend a bit more for it. Yeah. It's buy once, cry once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> As I mentioned before, there's yeah quite a few topic, other things I could mention, but we'll save it. I feel like they'd benefit from a full discussion on them there alone mm. but yeah pretty much i'd say that we've covered it quite a bit and people should just let others have their preference like if no one likes other things being pushed on them like for example when people would always go on about how great sony is i feel like that actually um deterred me from using sony for a long time just because like it makes it seem like fanboyish like and it usually if someone's very fanboyish about something it's not as good as they make it sound yeah you know you know like they overhype it so when you actually use it you won't like it so it actually deters people from using well, like myself in a way whereas if you just say the honest truth about everything it seems a lot more fair and then people will be more sort of willing to listen and willing to adopt it rather than like oh you prefer sony like use canon use canon, use canon. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah i actually know a few people like that but yeah <laughs> that's that's why i always <laughs> When uh, I suggest a camera or lens, I, I usually tell people to try it in the store, hold it for a bit, play around with it, see if it's something that you actually want or would enjoy or, you know, you prefer just holding it for long periods or if you're using it for travel, that sort of thing. Because, you know, yeah. you're buying or you're investing in such expensive gear, you, you're going to want to enjoy it. You know, especially if, like if it's too heavy, for example, you know, and you buy it just because of someone's recommendation and, you know, you go traveling with it and it just ends up being too heavy, then, you know, it's just, you're not going to use it for a long time. You'll probably use it for a month and then just leave it on the shelf because it's so, it's an hit, it's a hindrance to bring it around with you. Yeah, definitely agree. And like you say that about trying it, that's where people in Australia get really screwed over in a way. Cause in America, they got like lens rentals, borrow lenses, so they can rent all the gear for really cheap. So they'd know like, if I lived there, I'd happily rent the gear for a week, see how I like it, and then sort of make my decision off that. But here, we don't really have like a great rental yeah, it's, um, system like they do. Especially like some of the exotic lenses. Like some people, you know, not all the stores will carry all, all the range of a particular brand. So it makes it more difficult for us in Australia. Granted, our, our yeah. market is much smaller, but yeah, again, it makes yeah. it difficult for us at the same time. So you got to think though, if someone like Borrow Lenses opened like an Australian firm, they probably make so so much money yeah. they, they they pretty much own it like you know like how dji pretty much owns the drone market they pretty much would be the same if they opened up here oh yeah that'd be that'd be amazing if they did because there's one rental company here i inquired about borrowing a lens it was like meant to be like 30 bucks a day or 35 a day which seems very reasonable mm. but then when you actually go to rent it they add on all these other hidden fees like daily rental fee and all this kind of stuff and it that 35 per day ended up being like a hundred something per day oh, okay dude i was gonna say 35 dollars a day seems like a good deal <laughs> Yeah, because you know in America, like the amount we pay here for a day, they get like one week, one full week rental. Oh, wow. Which is insane. <laughs> like that's why, yeah, I think maybe sales stores would see a decline in sales if we had rental here just because people could actually try it first and realize whether they like it yeah, or not. Yeah, that's very true. But that in saying that, sometimes that's why the, um, I think our secondhand market is not the strong compared to the US because they've got a, you know, obviously they've got a higher population, but yeah, there's always people yeah. selling their gear on like Gumtree or Facebook marketplace, that sort of stuff. And then you can get some, you know, reasonable priced lenses or cameras that are still in really good condition because people just want to try yeah. it or just use it for a month and then just sell it compared to using it yeah. for a rental. <laughs> I pretty much always try to baby my gear purely for the resale value because I know, you know, us, we're definitely going to upgrade one day. So oh. if it's in good condition, you can get even more money back from yeah, it. Yeah, that's you know? a given, especially if you have the, all the packaging with you as well. <laughs> yeah, I make sure to keep all the boxes in that flat 
pack them and yeah. keep them stored somewhere. Oh, safe. you flat pack them? Yeah. Ooh, I should do that too. Which can, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. You, sometimes, it, depending on if Canon ones, they seem to glue the bottom so it sort of rips the box yeah. a bit. Not like that bad, but you still at least have the box. That's a good tip. I might do that because all my boxes are taking up so much room on my shelf and just, yeah, I'm going to try that. <laughs> Well, my, my girlfriend will yell at me if I, mine take up too much room, so. <laughs> she'll probably yell at me for mentioning that she'd yell at me on the podcast as well. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop it there then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said before, I, I won't be in another episode because I'll be dead by next week. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone happens to me, I love you all. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, yeah, thanks for having the discussion on the big bad B word and won't be long until the next one we will be discussing all right thanks for tuning in guys thank you um where can we find you on social media john so my social media is just at john sisson on insta or just type in my name on on youtube so just john sisson s-i-s-o-n and then you'll you'll find me over there and uh, use anything else besides youtube uh youtube and instagram just uh, mainly those i do have facebook uh, my my photography page. I don't post as much, but usually if I post something on Insta or YouTube, it'll be exactly the same. Like you'll see the exact same post. I just share it the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a repeat of everything. <laughs> yeah, there's too many things that I can't do multi platforms. I don't even do Twitter. I mean, I have a Twitter account, but never use it. Yeah, I've started to get a bit more into Twitter just for rumors and news. Oh, really? Because because you know, like if for those who don't know, every rumor site pretty much gets their information from Nokashita, this Japanese Twitter or Japanese website. So what, what I've done is I've turned on notifications. So as soon as Nokashita posts, you will see the notification come up. So that's how I get all my news and rumors now. Whereas you'll see it, it's funny because Nokashita will post and suddenly four or five minutes later, the other, like if it says Sony rumor, then Sony Alpha rumors will post <laughs> that same thing. Like we've got from our source, which is Nokashita. Uh, okay. <laughs> this lens is coming out. Uh, that's where he gets it from. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everyone, even like a lot of other ones like Canon rumors, everyone get it from Nokashita. Uh, I see. I usually just go on Sony Alpha rumors and then I'll just see whatever rumor there is. And then and I'm really like, oh, interesting. Okay. That's coming out. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I check them daily as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for me, yeah. Yeah. For me, um, would be my website photos by dlwe.com. So that has links to my Flickr, which I use the most and Instagram, which I hardly use these days. Um, those two probably and 500 px i upload occasionally but i say Flickr. i'm the most active one unlike <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> these days i still i still love Flickr. i still have lots of hopes for Flickr. classic Flickr. <laughs> yeah and the photography enthusiast is also on reddit i'm trying to start a reddit community as well as a Flickr community just hopefully the more people we can get eventually to join the more topics we'll have to discuss like fans want to suggest topics we'll be happy to cover them and tutorials and that kind of stuff as well Sounds good, man. Otherwise, thanks everyone for listening. If you made it this far in, hopefully you did. And you'll see us in a week or two again. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you.